RC with Adam is brought to you in part by these super awesome people. Uh, so I realized I did a silly little thing because this board, I overlooked the fact that this board has only two uh, UARTs and so basically that means that our receiver is going to connect to one of them and I want to use the other one for smart audio for our uh, video transmitter. And our camera is supposed to use one of the UARTs in order to control the camera through uh, the through the transmitter through stick commands. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. Okie dokie. Okay, so if we look at our now that we have all the motors soldered, if we look at our diagram here, we can see that. Uh, let's see if we orient this properly we can put our video transmitter on the back and it's going to be from left to right. It's going to be ground, five volts in, uh, video out, and that it's gonna, we're gonna connect up to uh, TX, uh, TX1 and that will connect to the RX or the uh, smart audio port on the VTX. This should work in theory, so let's do that. So on our on our video transmitter here, we can see that it says TBS Smart Audio, video in, ground, five volt out, ground and five volt in. Now, I don't know if we could use the five volt out to power this board, but since it's labeled in and out, we will just use the, the uh, ground and five volt in for this, and then we will use the TBS Smart Audio and the video in or into this board for the video right here. So these red, uh, the yellow and green wires, and then the black and red for the power. All right, let's go ahead and tin these pads. Okay, that, uh, those, yeah, these pads are just freaking tiny, man. This is ridiculous. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, I have decided to actually attach this buzzer. This is a, uh, uh, it's a VFly Finder 2 and that it has its own little battery supply which is great and charges up from the board power and so we will connect it right into this wire and we'll solder these wires on here and we'll have to strip them and tin them just like normal and so we can we can do that and then we can also uh, what I'm going to do for the smart audio what I've decided to do is I'm actually going to solder the smart audio wire to the LED pad right there, right there, the LED pad, and then we're going to use soft serial to switch that over to uh, to make it work, uh, or at least it should work, and then I'll be attaching the receiver uh, over here. Video in. All right, and then so that's, then that leaves us with the uh, TX1 and RX1. And then for this other one, well, I'm gonna have to tin all these pads as well. So let's kind of move this over here. Great, so the video transmitter is done and we have, because we have five volt and ground out, but that would be like if we wanted to connect it to like directly to our camera to power our camera or something. So I'm going to take these, I'll actually just, I will just remove the wires, I think. I mean, I could keep them on there, but why bother keeping them on there? There we go. That'll just kind of help us cut down on unnecessary wires. All right, now with our, let's wire up our camera. And with our wire bundle in here, you can see red is positive, black is ground, yellow is going to be for video, uh, purple or bluish colored wire would normally be for VBAT. That would give us our battery voltage in the OSD on the camera, the camera's OSD, but we don't care about that. And I don't think that's an option. I think they just sent the, they're just using the same connector. Um, for that, I think I will right now just ignore this wire. I will trim this wire and I will ignore it because it's possible that I would want to use this connector on something else in the future. So I'm just going to trim this. I will just trim it like that. So let's see our diagram here. Here's our camera diagram. We're going to wire this up. Oh, here we go. So from right to, so black, positive, video in. And then over here, we're going to do uh, the, the uh, green and the, the brownish wire. 
It's going to be over here, RX1, RX2, respectively. Okay, now we're going to solder in our beeper wire right here, or our buzzer. And that will be these last three. Actually, I need to trim these and tin them as well. So for our receiver, we want to do the top one, the second from the top, and then the fourth from the top. So one, two, three, four. No, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth one from the top, or the third from the bottom, or however you want to, however you want to look at that. And that should do it. That's going to be uh, RX two, which should be the proper one for our iBus receiver. All right, there we go. We are all wired up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we are all wired up, ready to go. We have our video transmitter. We have our receiver, so we can go ahead and connect the, all these guys. Before we tidy everything up here, I'm going to get my multimeter and put it to the continuity test function here. And then, so that way when I put these two probes together, it will beep. So I'm going to check all of my solder connections here and make sure they are not uh, connecting to each other. We can connect our beeper, although it will probably be pretty loud once we plug in the battery. Okay, there's our beeper. Pretty big bundle of wires, pretty big mess of wires in any case, but there really aren't that many things on here. It just kind of looks like that, but we'll go ahead and twist these wires a little bit, give them a little bit of twist. Nothing too crazy, but a little bit of twist, and that will keep things tidy. Even with stuff like this, we could give it a little bit of twist here. That really cleans things up a lot. This one is already twisted. So what I'm thinking here is uh, let's put, let's get my top plate and let me get the, the camera standoffs right here. We will put these in place and mount our camera to figure out where it's gonna go. This should be pretty simple. tell you what man it is the little things that are the most difficult like trying to find a little spot for the buzzer but actually be able to press the button for the buzzer very difficult and very important okay now we are going to put our uh, video uh, receiver in place that will just go right here on the bottom of the frame on the back and that should be pretty simple and then for the antennas I think we'll have one. Uh, we'll have one coming out the side here, and then one coming uh, out straight up. And I, I think we should get pretty good reception off of that. Even though, in some cases, we will have uh, the frame uh, in the way. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that because these are going to be ducted as well. We don't have to worry about them getting sucked into the propellers or anything of that nature. Okay, so that does it for the receiver. The receiver is seems to be locked in there pretty nicely. Probably should have tested all these items before putting them in here. That's one option, but in this case we will just we're just going to go for it, man. We're just going to go for it. So now what I have is I've re I've disconnected my antenna, strung it through the TPU mount and then reconnected it. So it's kind of like that. And it turns out there's not a super great way of attaching this video transmitter. So, yeah, so there's that. But that's I guess that just kind of continues with my style of quad building, which is just kind of all over the place. But I want to put a zip tie to try and keep this thing even more vertical so that I get a little bit better, uh, a little bit more of a reception, uh, a little bit more reception in case I'm facing back towards me. Oh, 
I'll just trim this here to about whatever I think it should be. So, I don't know, right about there. And then I'll just use a little tiny zip tie and uh, zip tie this in place. Yeah, that actually works really well. And it's also going to give me some uh, some strain relief sort of on the antenna. So it'll kind of flex right there. Before I put on the ducts, I'm just going to test run everything on uh, on Betaflight and, and do all that stuff. And we'll have to configure Betaflight and configure the motors because what we need to do, fortunately we don't need to remap the motors, but we do need to rotate the board. So that's gonna be a very important step.